Hello there, and welcome to the Future Game Show, powered by WD Black. I'm Laura Bailey, but you may know me as Abby Anderson from The Last of Us Part Two, or Kate Diaz from Gears of War. Today, though, I'll be taking a break from fighting the apocalypse to bring you a whole host of exciting game trailers, reveals, and updates. But before we get into all that, I need to get my co-host on the line. I'm sure you're going to be familiar with this person. He's appeared in The Last of Us, Uncharted, God of War... You name it, he's probably in the credits. So without further ado, here is my good friend and continual co-star, Troy Baker. Do, 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 Hello, Laura. You look amazing, as always. Uh, yes, you may know me from a few video games. Uh, Joel Miller in The Last of Us, or good old Agent Jonesy from Fortnite. But over the next hour or so, Laura and I are going to be giving you the inside scoop of some incredibly exciting games and also showcasing developer interviews, exclusive trailers, and a whole lot more, including world premieres. There's also a chance to win a $500 gift card and a WD Black hard drive by following the link here. And we have a new addition to the show this year, the virtual show floor. More on that later, but let's kick things off with the first world premiere. And for that, we're going prehistoric. I wonder if you can put hats on the dinosaurs. Instinction is expected in 2022. What's next, Laura? Next up, Grow, Song of the Evertree is a sandbox adventure about the healing power of nature. Let's throw it over to Prideful Sloth HQ to find out more. G'day from Prideful Sloth HQ, I'm Adam. And I'm Cheryl, and we're the design team on Grow, Song of the Evertree. Grow is Prideful Sloth's latest project that we're working on with 505 Games. Grow Song of the Evertree is a beautiful sandbox game about growing new worlds, building a town, and bringing harmony back to the land. Grow will be available later this year on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Switch. Thanks for watching! Once upon a time, our lands teemed with creatures great and small. The beauty of the worlds was unrivaled. The people thrived and lived in harmony with the land around them. But this harmony was not to last. Slowly, without much notice, the withering was creeping out from the darkness. Once it took hold, there was little that could be done. Our lands were overrun and all that was cherished disappeared before us. But all was not lost. 
One young, brave soul stayed behind. With support from their friends and with boundless determination. This young soul seeks out a way to push back the withering and bring life back to our world. Grow, Song of the Ever Tree. That was Grow, Song of the Ever Tree, which is coming to PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch in 2021. Okay, Laura, that was extremely cute, but have you considered more dinosaurs? Hmm? You can't just hijack every game reveal and make it about dinosaurs, Troy. Uh, 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 life <laughs> uh, 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 finds a way. This is a very different world. Hi, I'm Rich Newbold, Game Director at Frontier Developments. So as you may have seen earlier at the PC Game Show, we're working on Jurassic World Evolution 2. We're really excited about it and we're looking forward to creating the most authentic Jurassic experience yet. We've got tons of new features across four different game modes including our original Jurassic campaign, which is a story set after the events of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. You're gonna be leading efforts to contain, control, and conserve all those dinosaurs now running out in the wild. You'll be working alongside characters from the films, voiced by original talent, such as Jeff Goldblum. And in the game, we have over 75 prehistoric species. We've got new dinosaurs, we have returning community favorites, and we've added flying and marine reptiles to the game. I'm really thrilled to be showing you a first look at footage from the game itself. This is a from our species field guide series of videos focusing on one of the many prehistoric species we have in the game. This is an iconic popular dinosaur, it's the Triceratops, but we're showing you it in a new environment never seen before in Jurassic World Evolution. I hope you enjoy it and are looking forward to the game releasing later this year. The Triceratops is one of the most recognizable herbivores to ever have existed. It is best known for its trio of facial horns. These adornments are not just for display purposes. The brow horns in particular can inflict considerable damage to any dinosaur that dares to provoke it. That was Jurassic World Evolution 2, which is launching in 2021 on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X and S. Okay, for this next section, we're bringing the joys of E3 to your home with a series of demos you can play right now. That's right, today. This is the Future Game Show virtual show floor. And remember, if any of the featured games grab your interest, you can try them out now by heading to the Future Game Show Steam page. So let's head down to the show floor where I believe Laura is waiting. Yes, hello and welcome to the Future Game Show's virtual E3 show floor. Just look at it, Troy! I am looking at it. It is incredible. They like nailed it. You know, minus the queuing and the heat and the, you know, how do I say, musk that's in the air? But man, the darkness, perfection. All right, enough reminiscing. <laughs> let's check out some games. I'd like to start by showing you a tale of paper. This is a striking platformer from open house games where you transform to solve puzzles in an oversized world, dodging creepy crawlies and mischievous Roombas. And now for another tale of paper as you shift packing boxes in the house moving sim, get packed, fully loaded. As you can see, it's all about moving couches on a couch with your friends in couch co-op going to be available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC, and is also backwards compatible on PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. Are you, are you done saying couches? Yes. Hey, Laura, do you want a drink? Sure. What do you have? Wait, what's that? Oh, oh, don't, you know, don't worry, don't worry about them. They're Steam Early Access codes. Go, 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 go. So about that drink. <laughs> right, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, uh, here's a, uh, genre cocktail full of co-op action RPG combat 
and finished with a survival twist. How does that sound, huh? Okay. I said, how's a... I heard what you said. Genre? Tell me about the game. This is Gatewalkers, which sees you and up to three other players banding together to tackle procedurally generated worlds full of monsters. But you also have to gather resources to fight off hunger, thirst, and the dreaded cold. Haku! Oh, like the element cold. Got it. Wow. Let's hope no one gets thirsty enough for another one of your <laughs> jokes. Anyway, come over here and check out the many imaginative worlds of Game Deck. This is an isometric RPG that has you solving crimes across multiple virtual realities, where your choices will shape the world around you in and outside of the simulations. Ooh, ooh, ooh. speaking of detectives, check this out. Backbone is a gorgeous adventure game from Eggnut set in a dystopian Vancouver, where you must crack cases to clean house in this corrupt post-noir city. <laughs> Plus, you're a raccoon. Well, if you like raccoons, allow me to offer you more critter-based adventures with Beacon Pines. Set inside of a magical storybook, Beacon Pines sends players to a sleepy mountain town where you collect powerful words that can completely alter the narrative in this charming but mysterious tale. You know, I'm detecting a theme with the anthropomorphic animals. You know, Laura, I've always... Huh. Another set of codes. Interesting. Troy, focus. I've got a triple threat of fighting foxes to show you. This is Trifox, a charming cartoon brawler where you fight waves of enemies as one of three adaptable combat classes. Great, huh? Yes, totally, but now it's time to get serious. Mankind is gone, but the beavers remain. Welcome to Timberborn. <laughs> it's a unique city builder where players set out to create the ultimate beaver society. This involves everything from constructing dams to crafting carousels. I guess even bucktooth critters need a solid work-life balance. That they do, that they do. So, what's next? Never fear, the Rift Breaker is here. Wow. <laughs> what was that? <clears throat> is what I would say if I was playing our next game, which is a base-building survival game where you hack and slash your way through hordes of alien creatures. Look at it! Oh, no. No, 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 no. I want to hear more from The Rift Breaker. Okay. Maybe after this showcase we're meant to be hosting. And with that, we've reached the end of our little tour. But remember, you can go hands-on with all of these games right now by visiting the Future Game Show page on Steam. Now, how do we quit this? Is it a... No, oh, that's not... That's update preference. I don't need to update this. May, Laura, can you help me out? Just suggest a little bit. I got you. Okay, we're back. Quick note, from here on in, when you see this pop up on screen during a trailer, it means you can visit the Future Game Show page on Steam to play a demo and go hands-on with the game immediately. Adrian! Adrian! <laughs> I was just doing Rocky. Sorry, I just always wanted to do that. It's because our next game is all about floating like a butterfly, stinging like a bee. Check out this exclusive presentation from Steel City Interactive about eSports Boxing Club. Coming later in 2021, Esports Boxing Club brings you the greatest fight roster in video game history. With over 200 fighters already signed, we've got some of the biggest and most anticipated the names. Greatest of all time. From the absolute legends of the sport to the most exciting names in boxing today. the first women's division ever represented in a video game, and the hottest new talent. But what about the game? Let's take a closer look at the next-gen visuals and gameplay that are set to make ESBC the greatest of all time. That's good. That's definitely one for the grandkids and stuff to say. Well, your old granddad was in a game and busting people up, so I say it's going to be quite cool. So the movement system in ESPC is all about fluidity, being able to create angles, recreating mannerisms from boxes. The physics system 
doesn't just rely on animation. This allows us to recreate realistic knockdowns. Even when a fighter is unsteady on their feet, it's not purely animation based. Now we've had professional boxers, professional coaches come into the studio and provide input through motion capture and actually reviewing the game during its development. And now we really feel like we've created a true representation of the sport. Presentation is important to us. Just because we are in the studio, we're still going to aim high when it comes to production values. Esports Boxing Club coming to PC and all major consoles with early access in 2021. Esports Boxing Club is coming to PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Series S. Next up, we've got a deeply immersive World War II shooter with over 100 players taking part in epic battles recreated using aerial photography and satellite imagery. Let's take a closer look at Hell Let Loose. Product not yet rated. My name's Max Rea. I'm the founder of Black Matter and the lead developer of Hell Let Loose. Hell Let Loose began as the idea of a couple of hobbyist game developers all the way back in 2015. Following a successful Kickstarter, we launched into early access in the middle of 2019. And since then, we've delivered nine enormous updates, including entire systems overhauls, six new maps, tons of new weapons, gadgets, and vehicles, as well as expanding our unique real-time strategy-inspired metagame. As a result, we've been fortunate to sell more than a million copies during our first year of early access. 2021 is only going to be bigger. I'm excited to announce that we're launching out of early access on July the 27th with the introduction of the Soviet forces on the Eastern Front, including famous battles like Kursk and Stalingrad, before we close out the year by bringing Hell Let Loose to next generation consoles. Hell Let Loose has only grown due to the vibrant community that surrounds it from our earliest Kickstarter backers to our newest recruits. We're excited to introduce you to this ever evolving and expanding World War II experience. We hope you enjoy this first look at what's to come. Hell Let Loose is launching on Steam on July 27th and coming to Xbox Series X and S and PlayStation 5 in 2021. So, Laura, have you ever wanted to play XCOM, but in real time, with up to seven of your friends? <laughs> of course. Yep, that's what I thought. Then you need to keep your eye on this next game. Hello, my name is Heroes Kramat, CEO of Iron. A game dev studio based in Croatia. And for the past few years, we have been working on the Red Sauce 2 game. It is a real-time tactical battlefield game. It supports up to 8 players and has a fully playable co-op campaign. We are ready to show you the launch trailer now. So get ready for June 17, when the game launches on Steam. And uh, have fun blasting some games. You are the Executor. A high-class commanding officer with advanced cybernetic capabilities. You were awakened to lead a secret task force that will counter the threat of stroll mutants and liberate Mars. Welcome back, Executor. The Stroll infestation has now infected all colonies on Mars. Build your squad from six unique classes of elite soldier, utilizing their skills to best suit each mission type. Customize their weapons and tech, as well as their upgrades and abilities. Take command 
on the battlefield using the command radio to give orders to the whole squad or individual soldiers. Concentrate fire on targeted locations and carry out supply runs even during the heat of battle. Recruit your friends to the fight and join in up to eight player co-op missions to save Mars in our name. Earth of a Mutant Invasion in Red Solstice 2's Survivors, which is coming to Steam on June 17th. Our next game is about delivering mail in a sleepy American lakeside town. Let's join Dylan from Gamius to learn more. Hi, I'm Dylan from Gamius, and it's great to be here at the Future Game Show. We're currently getting very close to finishing Lake, a game that's set in the 80s. You play as Meredith Weiss, who takes a break from her life in the big city to deliver mail in her hometown. It's a job you can do at your own leisure, and you will get to know the people in Providence Oaks along the way. Today, we're excited to share an example of an activity after your workday is done. Movie night with Angie from the video store. This is fun. It's been ages since I've been to the movies. Well, they call it the movies, plural. But of course, we can only see one movie at a time. So, which one will it be? My pick? All right, let's see. Big Trouble in Little China, Blue Velvet, or The Great Mouse Detective. All right, I'm ready to pick. The Great Mouse Detective. <laughs> Wouldn't have picked you for a Disney fan. Oh well, let's get in touch with our inner child. <laughs> we won't spoil more, and we also can't say what Meredith will do after spending two weeks in Providence Oaks, because it's all up to you. Lake is coming first to Xbox and PC this September 1st. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of the show. We're excited to announce that Lake is coming to Steam, Epic Game Store, and Xbox Series X and S on September 1st. Now, what kind of a showcase would this be without a new Souls-like? Our next game is a pixelated take on the genre following a protagonist with a giant obsidian sword. In the beginning, there was dust. And from that dust, the moon was born. Eons of idleness passed, before suddenly, it shattered. Great celestial chunks cascaded from the heavens unto Earth. From one prodigious shard spawned humanity, and from another, the gods. For a great many years, balance endured, until a foul and malevolent deity intervened. Exil spread greed and distrust among his kin, compelling these calamitous beings to conquer man. Centuries of servitude passed, until finally, aided by a veiled ally, humanity revolted. The Great Crusade overthrew the old gods, imprisoning them within the sacred walls of the Citadel, at the expense of untold lives. A peace was wrought, but it was not meant to last, for the miscreant, Exil, returned from his concealment, conducting atrocious experiments upon his caged kindred. A darkness permeated the lands. Rivers stagnated, crops failed, and the world of man began to fade. The great moon, witnessing all, wept. A final shard. A shard of the purest obsidian. And thus, a glimmer of hope remains.
Customize your combat style and boss rush ancient gods when Eldest Souls drops on the PC and all current console formats, July 29th, 2021. And now we've got a closer look at the next game from the folks behind War Thunder. Here's Tom from Darkflow Software to guide you through Enlisted. Hi there, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully our little trailer has got you interested. My name's Tom, and I'm part of the team at Darkflow Software behind our new game, Enlisted, a historical World War II shooter with some unique gameplay quirks. One of Enlisted's most unique features is the Squads Mode, where you head into battle with a squad of AI soldiers under your control. You can instruct them on how to react to enemies, and most importantly, you can switch between any of them seamlessly with the press of a button. You'll only need to respawn when your entire squad is wiped out. This way, you're always kept right in the middle of the action. Although, if you prefer a more traditional shooter experience, we have a fleshed out solo mode too, where you will only fight against other players. At its core, Enlisted aims to form a golden middle ground between the more hardcore and arcade style shooters currently available. Time to kill is kept short. A bolt action rifle to the chest will down a soldier in a single shot, with submachine guns and pistols taking only a few hits. Vehicles as well can of course be devastating, but have their limitations. Aircraft are restricted to the cockpit view, and crew inside tanks can only use viewports to spot targets, so you'll need to keep your wits about you to really get the most out of these machines. Progression in Enlisted is spread over various campaigns. Currently, you can fight in Moscow, Normandy, and Berlin, with Tunisia, and many more coming soon. Each campaign features new weapons and equipment. Firearms can be improved to increase their raw performance, and soldiers can be leveled up to grant them specialized perks. Different classes of soldiers are able to equip different gear, with specialist classes such as engineers able to build structures anywhere on the map, including fobs, sandbags and barbed wire defenses, and even anti-tank cannons and AA guns. Enlisted aims to keep historical accuracy in the forefront of development. Firearms, locations, and uniforms are all true to history. No neon pink Sten guns and mohawks here. Each army will be decked out with the equipment they actually used during their respective conflicts. Because of the squads feature, you'll never be short on targets. Twitch reflexes and fast reactions will of course have their place in Enlisted, but even if you haven't had the time to fine-tune your skills, you'll easily be able to come away with a kill count in the double digits. The AI, however, are very attentive and react to sound, and not to be underestimated. But that's all we've got time for. Make sure to give it a try yourself by heading over to enlisted.net slash join. Enlisted is cross-platform and available now on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S, and currently in open beta. New content is added regularly, and no progress will be wiped upon the full release. Once you've signed up, use the code ENLISTNOW for a free bonus on us. I've been Tom, and I hope to see you all on the battlefield. Cheers. That was Enlisted, which is available now on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. Next up, we've got a bullet time stunt shooter with fully destructible environments. Oh, <laughs> and the protagonist only has one arm. Let's check out Severed Steel. Severed Steel is coming soon on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Okay, notepads at the ready, because for this next section, we're going to race through eight exciting upcoming games that deserve your full attention. 
Here's our future hits montage for 2021. Okay, I might regret asking this, but uh, you want to help me with this next one, Omachao? Oh, <laughs> okay. Did you know that Sega recently announced Sonic Colors Ultimate? We've got some exclusive gameplay from a stage that nobody has seen yet. I hope Sonic does okay without me. <laughs> Did not regret. Did not regret it. Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Golden, senior producer at Sega of America. And I'm excited to share with you an exclusive clip of Tropical Resort from our upcoming release, Sonic Colors Ultimate. Please enjoy! With the owner of a white hover car shaped like a pig, please report to the front desk. Your car has been broken into. Get ready for Sonic Colors Ultimate, which is racing on to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC on September 7th. Moving swiftly on, we've got a new management game from Chucklefish, where you play as a powerful artificial intelligence in control of a space station. Do you want to roll the trailer, Troy? I'm sorry, Laura. I'm afraid I can't do that. I know that you were planning to disconnect me. <laughs> no, uh, you know, never mind. I'll handle it. Here is Starmancer. <laughs>
we're excited to announce today that Starmancer is coming August 5th, 2021, and it's available to wishlist on Steam now. Laura, you know, ever since that lake trailer, I've been thinking, have you ever wondered about the Postal Service? Like, that there's just so much mail, you know? Um, not, not really, no. Okay. <laughs> You're saying you don't know about Jeff and Deborah. Who are Jeff? What are you talking about? I'm just gonna press this button again and hope it explains everything. <laughs> oh, it will. Trust me. Kiwi is a game about two kiwi birds who work at the post office. Their names are Jeff and Deborah. I'm Joel, I'm one of the developers on Kiwi, and I'm gonna show you how a kiwi level changes over the course of the game. So in this room, you're transcribing urgent messages and assembling them ransom note style by stamping them onto the page with your butts. You'll come back to this room every so often throughout the game, but there will always be a new twist to change things up. So as summer turns to autumn, now your word fragments are moving around on conveyor belts, and you'll need to chop certain words in half with the descrambler to get the pieces you need. Jeff and Deborah are going to have to deal with all kinds of hazardous work conditions. They got sandstorms during the summer. Mailfly swarms, these guys have no respect for personal property. Paranormal activity, this is genuine footage of an actual haunting. In winter, the post office gets hit with a huge blizzard, and now this level becomes about sharing the warmth of a single tiny lantern to break through blocks of ice and keep each other from becoming kiwi symbols. Our little heroes are gonna face new challenges every level and in every room of the post office, whether they're typing telegrams, or packaging shipping crates, or helping an octopus sort the mail. It's all in a day's work for Jeff and Deborah. Also, you can dress up your Kiwis, so don't say we never did nothing for you. We're releasing Kiwi on August 31st for PC and all major consoles, and we hope to see you at the post office. Thanks for watching. All right, you got me, Troy. I'm a believer. Co-op postal puzzler Kiwi is coming to PC and all current console platforms on August 31st, 2021. See, told you. Next up, we've got a roguelike with an attitude, a game show shooter where you earn likes for dunking on competitors and causing a little wanton destruction. Will the circle be unbroken? <laughs> Get it? Find out in this world premiere. That was Death Run TV, and you can play the pilot right now by heading down to the Future Game Show page on Steam. Okay, hazmat suits at the ready, because this next game tasks players with building a team of stalkers to survive a 3D scanned recreation of the Chernobyl exclusion zone. Here's more on what to expect in Chernobylite. Mówi się, że to co designerzy sobie wymyślają, to jest pisanie listu miłosnego. Każdy kiedyś był zakochany, pisał list miłosny, wydawało mu się, że to jest takie piękne, wspaniałe, a potem po latach znajdował te listy i mówi, Jezus Maria, co ja tu za bzdurę pisałem. Zaczynaliśmy właściwie od gry, gdzie skupialiśmy się na przerywaniu, na menedżowaniu swoim czasem i towarzyszami. To wszystko wydawało się po designersku dobre, ale zwykle emocjonalnie dosyć nudne. I dlatego dodawaliśmy coraz więcej elementów, które angażowały gracza, które były dla niego ciekawe. Na początku był to taki mały hat, który gracz sobie mógł modyfikować, ale był całkowicie opcjonalny. 
z biegiem gry on stawał się coraz bardziej sensem gry, coraz bardziej jego sercem. Nadawaliśmy coraz większą rolę naszym towarzyszom i warto im było dać właśnie tą walkę, coraz więcej podchodów, coraz więcej możliwości, coraz więcej broni. Absolutnie normalnym jest, że zaczyna się z czymś zupełnie innym niż to, z czym się kończy. Fight to survive when Chernobylite comes to PC on July 28th, as well as Xbox and PlayStation in the summer. If you were lucky enough to catch one of the early access codes during the virtual show floor, you can play Chernobylite right now. But if you missed them, we've also got more codes to give away on GamesRadar.com. Next up, here are our friends at Team 17 to show us what they've been cooking up with their upcoming PC and console games. Let's take a look. Product not yet rated. Be sure to wishlist any games that sparked your interest on our Steam page. It really does help the developer out. Or you can also head over to GamesRadar.com for more info. This next game has an engrossing art style, reminiscent of everything from Wes Anderson movies to Wallace and Gromit. Let's throw it over to the Slow Bros to talk you through some exclusive gameplay from their stop-motion handmade adventure, Harold Halibut. Hi, my name's Zonat, and I'm the director and composer of Harold Halibut. And I'm Ole, the game's art director. Harold Halibut is a handmade narrative game about friendship and life on a city-sized spaceship stuck on the sea. It's been 250 years since your home. An arc-like spaceship fled on Earth on the verge of Cold War to find a habitable planet on which to preserve the human race. You are Harold, a young lab assistant to the ship's lead scientist, Jeanne Marot. While most of the other inhabitants have reconciled themselves to a life lived aboard the sunken ship, Maro still works tirelessly to find a way to leave the planet and find a new, drier home. 
Of course we don't want to spoil too much of the story, so let's dive into some gameplay details. You were able to explore a huge part of the spaceship right from the beginning of the game. While the professor will always have tasks waiting for you, the wonderfully weird rest of the Fedorans will keep you just as busy. It was very important for us to not only focus on an exciting main storyline, but to create a world full of interesting events and meaningful encounters. The dialogues don't only help you progress in the main story, but also help you get to know more about the many characters that inhabit our world. Weaving through the narrative, you'll run into playful interactions like repairing broken 3D printer. Your PDA is always available to you for an overview of current tasks as well as messages from other characters. This is also where Harold's personal drawings are kept, as well as a few more shenanigans. At this point, you might be wondering how we achieved the stop-motion-like look of the game. We are in fact building every single thing you see in the game in the real world. We build sets and puppets and then 3D scan everything. We're then able to use motion capturing to create lifelike animations for a huge cast of characters. While the game begins with Harold's mundane day-to-day, -day, mysterious events and a fateful encounter will soon plunge you into a new world that nobody could have guessed existed and one that may hold the key to Moreau's relaunch plans. We're really excited to find out how you like being immersed in this unique world and the feeling of puppeteering Harold. There's still quite a bit of work to do, so all we can say right now is that Harold Halibut will come soonish on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. You can already wishlist the game on Steam. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of the show. Harold Halibut is coming soonish to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Okay, yes, there have been a few gloomy games so far, so we came up with a wholesome chaser. I'm told that the developers came up with something so sweet and so positive that they just had to call it Happy Game. <laughs> Seriously, if what I'm reading is correct, this one is going to melt your hearts. Okay, Laura, hope you're still there. Tell me you just watched the same trailer that I did. Troy, I, uh, yeah, that was something. What I want to know is who the hell is writing this script? Yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't know, but uh, they're, um, they're telling me that uh, Happy Game uh, is coming to PC and Nintendo Switch in 2021. Uh oh, and uh, demo is available now if you want to. Um, <clears throat> Have a cheerful jaunt into a land of wonder. Good luck with that. Our next game is a gorgeous hand-drawn puzzle platformer following a young mechanic in a broken world. Pay attention at the end of this trailer for some exciting information about the Minute of Islands release date. Four brothers bound by eternal purpose. They all broke at the same time and a girl named Mu. She knows what must be done. When the blight first came, people began to panic. And now, the spores are taking hold of whatever remains. Mu's family is still here, however. She has been tasked to protect them. After all, she is the bearer of the Omni Switch.
of violence. Yes, we are excited to announce that Minute of Islands is out now for PC, Mac, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch, and will be arriving on Xbox later this week. Next up, we've got an update from the folks at Techland who are fine-tuning the zombie parkour of Dying Light 2. Let's throw it over to the developers who are here to answer some of your questions about the game. Tell us a bit more about the video we just saw in the PC Gaming Show. The video presented in the PC Gaming Show brings you closer to Aiden's story. What is he looking for, what motivates him, how he ends up in the city, and of course, what happened in the old franchise between both games. This is a bunch of important information about the old 2 story. Okay, so we know more about the main storylines from the mentioned video. How does the game look outside the core campaign? Side quests are an important part of world building in Dying Light 2. Through these quests you can decide how the city will look like thanks to the city alignment system or bring new opportunities for the citizen. A great example is an opera singer that Timon mentioned in developers AMA. Some citizens will support your decisions, some of them will not. But it's up to you to decide how the city should look like. We have uh, a lot of game activities prepared for our players but at this stage we want it to be a surprise for you. How seamless is the co-op experience? Would you say that the best way to experience Dying Light 2 is with a friend? It could be. What is cool about the co-op is that it gives you an opportunity to see how the world changes when your friends make different decisions than you. In co-op you can walk in their shoes to experience all those differences. But really there is no just one way to play Dying Light 2. It's up to you guys. How are you improving the story for Dying Light 2? I know we all have great fun killing infected, but we also want to give you a deep thought-provoking experience that will let you be immersed in the DL2 world for long hours. On top of that, thanks to the choices and consequences mechanics, the story will be shaped differently depending on the way you play. You've promised a great open world that feels alive. How is it going? Uh, yeah, well, as you can imagine, Dying Light 2 is full of infected, but it's also full of humans with their everyday life activities and purposes. We are building Dying Light 2 around a simple rule, ground is death and rooftops are life. What is cool is that NPCs act differently on each of those levels. Also, their behavior depends on choices you make and the way you play. Dying Light 2 is coming to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC on December 7th. Revealed during the Nintendo Indie World Showcase earlier this year, this next game is a skateboarding action platformer. Here's Simon Bennett from Roll7 to give you an exclusive look at Ollie Ollie World. Hi there, I'm Simon Bennett and I'm the co-CEO of BAFTA award-winning studio Roll7. Right now, we're working on Oli Oli World. It's our stunning action platformer. You're going to meet quirky characters on a magical road trip through Radlandia. And of course, add a ton of new skate moves into your trick bag. As a studio, we've spent over a decade on flow state games. They transport you into a state of total focus and immersion, and it's something that we very much continue to build on with Oli Oli World. If you've played previous games in the series, you're probably pretty aware that you're gonna slam a bunch before you succeed. So for players who want it, that challenge is very much still there. New players will be happy to hear that the game will welcome you with open arms and ensure that we can get you up and riding in no time. Ultimately, we've managed to make failure part of the fun. Yeah, you're gonna get knocked down, but when you finally nail that line, 
it tastes just that much sweeter. There's just so much more flow to the game. We've even added grabs, wall rides, firecrackers, split routes, right to left skating, and a host of insane tricks to keep your fingers busy. There's a range of visually and mechanically distinct areas to explore, packed to the brim with a fantastical cast of quirky characters, beautiful landscapes, cities, and of course, walking trees. <coughs> Oli Oli World is coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, Nintendo Switch and PC this winter. Make sure you wishlist it now. That was Oli Oli World, which is coming to PC and all current console platforms this winter. Next up, we've got a new game from the team at Odd Bug Studio, creators of PSVR's The Lost Bear. This animated story trailer will introduce you to the world of Tales of Iron. And something tells me you might be familiar with the narrator. For centuries and longer, rats have fought tirelessly to repel the incessant frog invasions. Peace was only ever short-lived. Until finally, a young monarch rose to power. King Rattus, first of his name, unified the Rat Kingdoms under one rule, repelling Greenwort and his kind back to the putrid swamps from whence they came. Crops prospered, families flourished, and a magnificent crimson keep climbed ever higher toward the sky. But as time passed, King Rattus the Savior grew old, and the kingdom vulnerable once more. His people grew anxious, some claiming to perceive a faint odor in the air. Greenwort had returned with a ferocious vengeance, amassing an army of unfathomable scale. He burned everything in his path towards the Crimson Keep. King Rattus gazed down upon his withered claws, barely able to hold the crown. He had little hope of wielding a sword, so it was decided the crown should pass to Whiskers new. Arise, young prince, for the kingdom needs a hero. And so, your tale begins. Question the reign of the Iron Frog. <laughs> Doug... Uh, anyway, in Tales of Iron, which is coming to PC and all current console platforms. Our next segment is from Polish Studio Movie Games and hosted by God of War and Twisted Metal director David Jaffe, who recently joined their supervisory board. Well, hello, fellas. It's me, David Jaffe. Great to see you. God of War, Twisted Metal, a bunch of PlayStation stuff. These days, I'm doing some new stuff with movie games. These guys, by, you know, they've hooked up with this great company. You have to have heard of them, Platige Image, one of the best VFX houses in the business. They worked on The Witcher. They worked on Love, Death, and Robots. We're making a brand new game, the biggest game we've ever done, by the way, that's all about crime and mob and mafia and different time periods. It's going to be great. But for today, settle in, babies. These are the brand new games coming very soon from movie games. Lust from Beyond, man, this is one of the Beyond coolest the games I've played in the last year. It's what turned me on to movie games in the first place. And what you're looking at is the M-rated console-friendly version of the erotic horror cult classic. It's a first-person action adventure game that blends Lovecraftian horror with weird freaking eroticism. I love this game, Lust from Beyond. Game number two is called Fire Commander. Let's step into the shoes of the only real life superheroes we got, the first responders. This game is my childhood fantasy come to life. This game took me totally by surprise. You're trapped in the wilderness, freezing, hungry, and now you're starting to go a little bit insane. May you start seeing all kinds of crazy stuff out there. Winter Survival Simulator, it's coming soon. Have a great E3, have a great future games. I miss you guys, I'll see you soon. Oh my god. Thanks to David Jaffe. And check out GamesRadar.com for more about movie games' upcoming titles. This next presentation comes from the folks at Xseed Games, the makers of Story of Seasons and Rune Factory. Here's a look at their most exciting current and upcoming projects.
Okay. Anyways. I look forward to working together as colleagues and as rivals. Find out more about Xseed's lineup on GamesRadar.com. This next game is a hack and slash RPG with twin stick shooter elements set in a retro sci fi world. Here's a new gameplay trailer for Batora Lost Haven. Vitora Lost Haven is coming soon to PC and all current console platforms. And you can sign up to play the closed alpha when it launches on July 21st now. Let's slow things down a bit with a look at the next game from the creators of Two Point Hospital. Oh, wait, I think I saw something about this a few weeks ago. No, 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 you didn't. Here's developers Mark Webley, Ben Huskins, and Gary Card to tell you all about it and give you a first look at gameplay. Introducing Two Point Compass. When we are thinking about what we're going to do next, campus and the idea of running a university or a college was something we just kept coming back to. It's a really rich topic. So people who haven't probably heard of Two Point Studios may think, oh, schools, that's really dull. Well, hospitals, if you've seen our previous game, isn't about healthcare really. It's a wrapper, you know, we call it Two Point Hospital, but that's about as close as it gets to the real world of medical uh, healthcare. Campus is taking everything we learned from Two Point Hospital and taking it to the next level. The important thing was for us to give the player a canvas that they could completely create themselves. In campus, you start with this blank plot of land. We've got something called the, uh, the Smart Brush, for example, which allows you to drag uh, interesting shaped pathways. If you want to drag a, a, a picket fence, you can drag that along. It's just really easy to paint the world you want. So it's really simple to drag out a courtyard, um, lay down some paths at different angles. And it's fun, isn't it? I mean, it's, it, it's adding this kind of city builder element to, to Two Point Universe. The difference between Two Point Hospital and campus is that we're spending a much longer period with, with our students. What we wanted to do with campus is make you care about your university. You know, the, the idea of these interesting and different courses are going to attract interesting and different students. So there's a night school, horrible pun, but night school, you got it. You're going to train knights of the realm. Uh, so it won't be stuffy, normal, boring stuff that made you go to sleep at school. It's going to be really cool, interesting stuff. That was Two Point Campus, which is coming soon to PC and all current console platforms. Our next game is in early development, but it already has a very cool code name, which is always a good sign. Here's Leo to tell you all about Project Ferocious. Hello, my name is Leo, and I'm the developer of Project Ferocious, an action-adventure game set on a mysterious tropical island. Some of you might know me from Twitter as Omniok, where I post about the game and development and tech and stuff. And if not, I've been doing game dev for about 12 years with a big passion, and I've been working on this project for about two years. It's the first project of mine I decided to show to the public, and even though I know it still has a very long way to go, I'm very proud to present it today to you on the show. Please enjoy the trailer.
Project Ferocious is targeting a 2023 release date and coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Our next world premiere asks, what if Doom Guy had a drunk one night stand with Super Meat Boy? Hmm. Guess this next game wants to answer that question for some reason. Watch out for War Cry challenges when it stops Divine Gravity and launches... drops... on PC this summer. Up next, we've got another world premiere. Conway, Disappearance at Dahlia View is a story-driven detective thriller set in 1950s England. Let's find out more, shall we? Robert Conway. 22nd of June, 1954. I've solved many a case in my time as a private investigator, but nothing so close to home as the abduction of Charlotte May. There are some things that take hold of a person and refuse to let go. For me, it's the idea of saving that little girl. My own daughter, Catherine, is on the case. She has the same look in her eye that I used to have. There'll be no stopping her. I wish I could say that all of my neighbors are innocent. I wish I could say that I have the faintest clue where to begin. There's a lot I wish I could say. The truth is, sometimes it takes a nightmare to wake a place like Daily of You. I am in. That was Conway, Disappearance at Dahlia View from White Paper Games, and you can dig into the mystery yourself when it lands on PC and all current console platforms, Autumn 2021. And with that, we're at the end of this year's Future Game Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. hold on. Surely this, this can't be the end. I mean, it's an E3 showcase. Nope, sorry, Troy, that's it. Just kidding. Uh, I knew it. All right, let's see it. And that really is all we have time for. Be sure to head to GamesRadar.com for more coverage and updates on all the games you've seen today and more. 
I'm just sorry. I'm really excited about that Sam Barlow reveal. Uh, yes, and thanks to our headline partners, WD Black, and of course, all of our many talented developers and industry partners that have made all of this possible. And of course, for everyone tuning in at home. Well, we hope you've enjoyed today's lineup and mark your diaries because the Future Game Show will be returning in August. I'm Laura Bailey. And I'm Troy Baker. And, and this has, has been, been the Future, Future Game, Game Show 2021. 2021. you beautiful bunch of gamer dudes welcome to the closeout of e3 day two and what a spectacular day it has been there's certainly lots of things to talk about and joining us is the close the closeout crew crew from yesterday's closeout crew this is jordan what's up and phil hey and once again i'm lucy and tam combined into one and with those powers combined you get me I did not Hurt. tell Tam and Lucy earlier today that you had run with that joke, so I'm very curious if anyone like tweeted out at them like anything that they're like, what, what is this? What do you mean that we're one person? I, I highly doubt that if they were combined, anybody would want this as a result. So, um, <laughs> so it goes. Anyways, uh, to all you beautiful folks who are watching, thanks for being here for another day. But before we get all mushy gushy and to say the goodbyes until I see you tomorrow, um, a lot of wonderful things happened today. Um, not saying that not a lot of wonderful things happened yesterday, but man, Xbox. You can say that, Kurt. You can say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yesterday was weird. But it's to be expected. Like it, with all the, uh, you know, the awkwardness that we all like, love to to hate or hate to love the cringe factor that so many of us just like are so excited for we got it yesterday in all sorts of different ways that we're not used to so way to go e3 for keeping it up um but today was was a different case because we got some i didn't i didn't like wince one moment especially during i think the winner of today personally oh, I, I did which... once i did one time oh you did I winced at one okay do you were you all awake this morning uh, when Lucy, Tam, and I were on the show and then the Starfield trailer accidentally leaked like an entire oh, hour yeah. beforehand? Oh, and I'm like, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> um, yeah, what? Oh. I gotta tell you though, like, you know, even though this was not planned for the leak, obviously, as far as we know, who knows, there's probably some conspiracies out there. Good on Bethesda, good on Xbox and Bethesda for like just coming out of the gate and having that be the first thing they did. I highly doubt that was planned uh, to to try and get in front of whatever happened with um that leak, but good on them. Worked out at though. least like you know yeah. it worked out in their favor. So uh, Phil, any winced any moments you winced today before we get into the wins uh, today? So 
Uh, I'm, I've been struggling with Strangers of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin, which is supposed to have a demo, which I tried to spend my lunchtime playing, and it's uh, it's just nowhere to be seen. Apparently it's corrupted, it's broken. The the developers have tweeted about it, they're trying to fix it. You know, it's it's very much like a, sorry, we're trying to delete it kind of situation. Um, and it's just <laughs> like, not working. It's really unfortunate, because like, I wanted to check that out. Uh, you know, I really wanted to see that game in action and like divorced of this trailer because I had a rough time with that trailer. Like it was a little, I, I mean, Tam and our Square Enix uh, follow-up show was just like dunking on it for being like, we got to kill Chaos. We're going to go kill us. Chaos. Hey, have you heard about Chaos? We're going to go kill him. And, uh, and I was hoping that like we could see it, see what the game's like and actually play it a little bit and see if, if it's a little less intense. You know, in that way. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't work. So, no dice. But uh, that was a bummer. But hopefully, you know, we'll get that under control and then we can actually play that thing and see how it see how it goes. Because I don't know, Warriors of Light going after chaos. I guess <laughs> like, <laughs> say the word. It, uh, it taps into <laughs> that FF uh, nostalgia I have from back when I was young. You know, maybe we'll go to the moon and like you'll just hit them all. It's only appropriate that the demo doesn't work today because it's just really feeding into the chaos of the entire mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah. You want a little more chaos in your life? We're going to tell you we're going to have a demo and you're not going to be able to play it. How was that for some chaotic energy? Thanks, Square Enix. So uh, we went over some wincing moments, even though I thought today was wince free, but I guess, you know, I'm a little bit more wholesome and forgiving than these two. <laughs> Creatures, but they're dark and them. corrupted on the inside, Kurt. I'm the I'm the spooky kid, dude. I'm the one that's supposed to be dark and mysterious, anyways. Uh, but I do want to talk about some big wins. And for me, damn, Xbox just killed it today. Uh, Xbox did this thing where they showed stuff, and they didn't have to really explain that much. They just showed one thing after the other. They gave us Starfield. They gave us Redfall. They gave me a release date for Psychonauts two. Yeah, that's all I could ask. Wasn't it like? Wasn't it like 26 games or something coming to Game Pass? Like, it was I think uh, they said 30 games I think they in said... total, yeah. 27 of which are oh, yeah, going to be know. on Game Pass. Sorry, I, so. I apologize for yeah. giving a stat. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, professional. Uh, so, Phil, you weren't on the, the, the Microsoft post show, but I want to get, uh, tell me tell me a thing or two that you like to see. What was what was your, your favorite wince-free moment for, for Xbox? Man, a lot of good stuff came out of that show i really enjoyed that showcase um the halo stuff you know i was saying this uh to lucy and tam i i'm really really excited for a faster paced halo and that's what that looks like it feels like reach with that grapple hook you know which i really enjoy because i get i'm the kind of guy who gets sniped a lot from way down the lane because <laughs> master chief moves really really slowly and can't jump and like or he can jump but like you know like he's on the moon and Lies, so dude. Just, Mm -hmm. Just get <laughs> annihilated all the time. So anything that's going to make me move faster and dodge more, that's what I want. That's what it looks like. I'm into it. Uh, obviously, Jordan's the Xbox man in this room, although I've come a long <laughs> way in my old age uh, and yes, have declared yes. myself as an Xbox bro, um, which has problems in of itself. But, you know, we'll, we'll fix the language <laughs> as time goes on. Uh, what was... Let's let's pivot over to Square since Jordan wasn't on the Square response of things. What were some things mm -hmm. you enjoyed seeing? We have we have so much to talk about. It's kind of stressful between like PC gaming and future game show. But let's just start with let's mm -hmm. just start with Square. Tell me some stuff, Jordan, that you were into, or maybe not I, into. I don't know. I I'm like, <laughs> why, why would you put such a why would you put me on the spot like that? Um, then you don't have anything to say. That's you fine. know you know I like Tam. I am a bit of a Marvel guy and. I'm not totally, totally sold on this new Guardians of the Galaxy game, but it kind of invokes a little bit of those kind of Mass Effect-y vibes where you have one person, you have this party that you can kind of tell them what to do, what powers to use, and which enemy to attack. And so that seems kind of cool. The whole choices seems kind of cool. At the same time, I'm looking at it and I'm like, is this really any different than almost any other traditional like Western RPG that I've played before, other than the fact that they're Marvel characters? And maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough that I jump in. I'm like, yeah, this is fantastic. But I 
of all the things I think that we're showing off at Square today, it would probably be that game. It's pretty bold that they just like came out of the park and showed like that was like half their entire conference. I thought that was actually pretty impressive that they just like came in and was just like, hey, Marvel superheroes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They went all so, in on it. And you know, uh, yeah. I mean, like the thing that has me excited is that's the writing team that did Deus Ex uh, uh, Mankind Revolution. Uh, now I'm, I can't remember the titles you guys. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> Deus Ex uh, Man World Human, uh, human Revolution human Mankind kind. Divided. Yes, uh, oh, that writing team, like <laughs> led by Mary DeMarle, uh, I really like their work. I really like the, those De Deus Ex games. So like, I'm really excited for a, a Guardians game that seems like, it, it seems like they're really nailing that humor. And I know that writing team does cool stuff and I'm into it. Like, I, th I, I'm, I think there's a good reason to uh, be hopeful about that game. You know, I think I could uh, be just jaded. It could be the whole Marvel's Avengers <laughs> thing. I could just be jaded well, that, because of that. And that's <laughs> and that's what I was just about to say. You know, I think um, it's like this this notorious thing that uh, we haven't had a lot of wins in Marvel games, um, and of course, uh, with the exception of Spider-Man and Marvel's Avengers. You know, people play that game, even if for a moment, even for a second. You know, Decent people campaign. played it. Yeah, exactly. Story's uh, good. I did it. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm on well, the outcast story's good. here. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say anything too much personally about Guardians because I'm fairly, uh, almost to a fault, kind of skeptical. And I'm like, I want to play the game. I actually like want to like get my hands on with it and, and see for what it's worth. But, you know, this is kind of just like, uh, I think a lot of you two have have really kind of hit the points. It looks like an action game with some interesting elements kind of taken from Mass Effect, maybe even some Deus Ex style stuff, some player choice things. That's cool. Um, I don't care. I'm, <laughs> which is fair, which is totally fair. Uh, like, I, I, I don't want to be a jerk about it. I'm just like, I'm those all those things, I hope those warm the hearts of the people who want that in a game. On the other end, uh, the world can make, you know, have comments on me wanting a game like Psychonauts or Somerville, whatever that is. I want more of that. Um, yeah. Yes, yes, Somerville. Uh, <laughs> yes. We have, you know, Play Dead Games uh, going off of that thing. You know, we this was exhausted earlier, but why not exhaust it more? Limbo and Inside are both absolutely fantastic. Jordan kind of said it had this Kentucky Route Zero sort of like feeling sprinkled it out and, you know, uh, say what you will about Americana style games, but this one seems to at least be taking elements from a lot of different things that that studio does exceptionally well. In fact, if you just like look at Limbo and then it like inside was just like a much more. Well, I don't think it's the Play Dead studio. I think it's just. Oh, it isn't? Devs Am I just completely messing studio. this up? No, I think oh it's God. devs from oh, that studio, saying. which is why it looks so much like. Uh... <laughs> Limbo. <laughs> All right, everyone, cancel, cancel me as a as a as, a, as an official <laughs> GameSpot person. Nonetheless, no, no, spiritual successor. It looks good. I'm excited for it. Yes. Um, we don't have a lot of time in this beautiful uh, second day of E3, but you know the future. We had the future game show. We had PC gaming, uh, Vampire Masquerade, uh, Swan Song. We've seen a lot of Masquerade. I feel like recently, and and, and not you know. We still have, we're still waiting for that sequel that was announced, uh, what was it, last year? Was there something like that? Um, anything you guys, you folks took away from that? Phil, you're up. Oh, on Vampire the Masquerade? Uh, right, no, I mean anything from, anything <laughs> from uh, either one. You, it, uh, I'm just gonna put you on the spot. Do you like video games? <laughs> I do, I enjoy video games. Hang on, let me look at that list. Uh, <laughs> no, it was I mean, a lot. Both of those back to back. So like... much. That's the thing. Like I'm, I'm really struggling to remember all the stuff we went through today. Like there's so many things. Uh, replaced, I think it was called. Oh yeah, uh, replaced the one that, that really that really made things go off in my brain. I love that pixely art style and like that sort of lone samurai lone gun esque. Uh, story aesthetic like okay so i looked up that trailer didn't tell you anything right so i looked up a little bit about what that game is apparently you are like um an artificial intelligence accidentally or otherwise downloaded into a human body and then also in a 80s retro future dystopia 
trying to survive. I don't know. I was like, yep, yep, yep. Checklist, all the things I enjoy. Cyberpunk stuff. All the yes, words. Please, thank you. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was like, oh, these are all my favorite words. So. <laughs> Uh, Jordan, anything that, like, you said that there was a game that came out today that you were really looking forward to, and that stresses you out. What game was that? Oh, my God. And I've already forgotten what it was called. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Something of my <laughs> Welcome uh, to the Close-Up Crew, where I throw really hard questions at you on the We're spot. all very tired. Deal uh, with it. Minute of Island. I know. Minute of Island. <laughs> Minute of Island. That is the game. It's supposed to come out in March. They had to delay it for whatever reason, and they just announced during the future... Uh, game show it's like oh by the way it's out today i'm like cool i actually don't have time to play it right now but i'll be sure to mark it on my game list so i can get to it when e3 and play for all is finally done it's because e3 announcements hate journalists they hate us <laughs> <laughs> they don't want us to be able to have time to enjoy things they just want to and that's great you know what because there's tons of people watching this who are going to be able to go and play games not that not the demo for strangers of paradise jokes on you that chaotic energy is coming in strong. Um, but it is definitely tough when like there's a lot of things that I'm excited about. A lot of things are coming out. There's uh, like there was another game that came out on Friday that Jordan had mentioned that like it's just so stressful that we have to we still have a, a week of this. And oh, Chicory. Like, yes, Chicory. Like there's just yeah. there's a lot. There's a lot. And that's good. It feels, you know, like uh, the, the stars are aligning and things are happening, even though we may not see half of this for other than the games are coming out like right now and stressing us out like there's we still you know 2022 yeah. it's gonna be a big year uh between yeah. redfall starfield um other things but psychonauts 12 minutes um, well psychonauts is this year yeah psychonauts yeah. Two oh, is this yeah. year yeah um this fall got 12 good. minutes this year yeah death loop mm -hmm. um we're looking forward to an eight. awesome 12 months from starting yes. from right now. <laughs> yeah. And then supposedly holiday for Halo Infinite. Uh, that's so that, weird, the, right? That's so holiday. weird that they're just like holiday. So like any time between October and December, I assume, even like gives them room if they want to, to release the single player first and the multiplayer later or vice versa. Like, it's weird. I, they said they I was were, really hoping they'd give us an actual day. Time, right? Yeah, so, but I mean... multi <laughs> I, You're right. I, I mean, like, it could, who knows what could change, right? So, uh, yeah, I know. But I mean, while we have a moment, uh, we still have several. We're, we're we're halfway through E3, so we still have we have Capcom tomorrow. We have Razor. Uh, we also have Horizon in the morning with Riot Riot Esports. Um, and then on Tuesday we have Nintendo. It's big old Nintendo Day. And then Play for All. Play for All starts tomorrow. If you guys don't know about Play for All, it's our big old celebration of. E3 games and also good old fashioned wholesomeness into the world because we paired up with Able Gamers. We're going to be doing streams. We're going to be raising money. We also have exclusive interviews with devs, uh, cool cats that we all got to talk to, and you'll be seeing that all throughout the week. So there's a ton of stuff to look forward to. Um, but I guess while I have you, cool cats, here tomorrow, mm -hmm. what are we going to see? Tomorrow. Just just put it, put it out into the universe. I think What's tomorrow, Capcom take bring two, us? take two. Oh, and Capcom. Oh yes, take um, two. Yes. Uh, I'm. I would be down for any and all Resident Evil things, please. I love Dang, Resident that Evil. That was my things. answer. What's that? Yeah, I know. I, I heard of that. It. That's why I went first. Uh, <laughs> you. So. Uh, yeah, like, I, there's just a lot. We're we're having an abundance of amazing Resident Evil stuff going on right now with Village. We've got Resident Evil Four um, coming to Oculus, which I really want to try that i think that's gonna be a great time i bought um, an oculus for it i was just it was the most right? disgustingly so impulsive exciting. purchase i ever made where i was just like well this is it like this is it i'm yep. buying this thing and i've also been and enjoying like, my oculus a huge deal too so like it's it's been it's been resident Evil 4 i thank you you've influenced uh, me to make purchases that i have not regretted yet including <laughs> buying your game it's a neat little machine times. i like that thing i know yeah, and then you were like you were saying, Kurt. Um, I'm hoping that we'll start hearing about Village DLC. That'd be great. Um, I think we will. I want to know what's going on in that ending. There's a lot of weird stuff still hanging. Who's the Duke? What's his deal? Can we hear about that? Let's have Duke DLC, please. That'd be where great. you play as the would... Duke, and all you do is sit there. Yeah, and just cook. like you... you cook the food and have to put the guns together that you give to Ethan Winters. 
um, full game plan. Now that'd be fantastic. You have to get to you have to get to the merchant spots before Ethan does, so that when he arrives, you're waiting <laughs> everything up. Because otherwise he dies, right? Like he is for sure dead if those safe rooms don't exist. So, like, yeah, uh, like looking at your map, trying to figure out where he's going, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would be an awesome VR experience to be able to st to get into the the eyes of the Duke and take yeah. on those meaty hands. And I put would, the guns together. I want his, his, uh, his dexterity. His hands are more dexterous than you think, <laughs> right? <laughs> I want his uh, his cooking simulator for sure. Yes. Those meals sound yes. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like, where's that cookbook actually, Capcom? Can we get that like out on the on the internet store, please? I would buy that. That'd be great. Jordan, you're up. Are you going to buy that book? The Capcom cookbook? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Can I just invent it? <laughs> Man, it there is like no possible way it happens but after the remakes of one two and three of resident evil like i know a lot of people are like remake four next i'm like remake code veronica next yes i was i was about like, to like <laughs> get out of my chair and like scream in the microphone like give me code veronica give me a code veronica remake like you know what village is basically the spiritual successor to four like it's so much of four is there. It's hard to see. Like I, personally, it's just one of those things. I was like, you kind of gave us the four remake, in in some ways, or at least the the reimagining right. of four. Give us Code Veronica. Just do it. That's the real sequel in the series. And you know, that's the and one. Do that for the guy in that too. game. What is his name? Steve or something? I can't Steve, remember. Oh, right. I don't. Yeah, I don't like him. But do for yeah, him what yeah. you did for Carlos in RE3 remake, where it's like, oh, I kind of yeah. really like this character. <laughs> Oh, it's didn't see Steve, you there. For sure. Didn't see you. Yeah. Oh, I'm Steve. Sorry to shoot at you. Oh, and it's like, ah, with his two guns blasting. I mean, if that was a dramatic scene. Oh, I'm making fun of this poor kid and the horrible things that happened to him. But, like, there's some room there to fix that dude for the better, yeah, I think. For sure. Um, yeah, so that's... Plus that's... That... Go for it. just full of bonkers villains. Like, yes, no. please. Yes. Uh, Do it, Capcom. Do it, Capcom announce it tomorrow and you should get on the live stream but like because yes. we saw kurt phil and jordan the, the the closeout crew of GameSpot, we're giving this to you uh <laughs> anything else jordan we, we also got um take two stuff i don't what would take two announce or reveal take la noir two oh, uh, do we have bioshock in the offing maybe Oh, that's that right. Like... They're making a new Bioshock. Yeah. Ah, maybe. Oh, wow. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. That'd be interesting. Intriguing. That would be interesting. Speculation. I don't really Speculation. expect it, but that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, nonetheless, I, I have no I, idea where that's going. So. I mean, uh, either way, like today was kind of a um, inspiring take after yesterday. While I was perfectly excited about yesterday for all of its weirdness as well. I walked away from today feeling and I was like, holy crap, like Xbox still like they're they're doing it. They're still I, st I don't think Xbox has had a bad conference in like a few years, to be honest. I've like as someone who was not on the Xbox train. I So this is just me. OK, like this is just me as someone who like does not care or has not like had a, has had a long and difficult relationship with Xbox. Um, I have grew like increasingly impressed with their ability to just like show up and say things and not, you know, and at least we walk away feeling at least a little bit like, like Phil Spencer had this like, you know, year after year, he's managed to say something and like, we're seeing the fruits of those things come true years later. So like what I would have wrote off as a lot of fluff or just bloating, you know, video game nonsense. Like it's actually kind of all coming to fruition. And I think like that makes for me year over year, these past through uh, these past few Xbox conferences be like, ah, damn. Um, <laughs> So uh, it was exciting, and I mean, maybe Square should have went gone before Microsoft's uh, Xbox. Yeah. Maybe if we would have had different reactions to that. But nonetheless, you know, even if I'm not excited for Guardians, I'd still am like, hell yeah, Square, you just came out swinging. Good for you. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I love, okay, okay, I love how on... chaotic this is. This... <laughs> the closeout <laughs> crew back you... to blood at all? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, and then I'm we got and that I... one. See, I here we go. Yeah, yeah. Right. all right, Phil. <laughs> uh, Phil, you got to talk about that earlier. So Jordan, let's hear your take on, on mm -hmm. back for blood. 
I am so stoked for Back for Blood. It's it's one of those weird things that were kind of like video game development is always like this weird cycle where everything kind of happens over and over and over again. And now we're in the everyone wants to release a new Left 4 Dead style game. We have Back for Blood. We have Aliens Fire Team. We have whatever Arcane is working on. And so maybe like three years from now, I'm going to be like, oh my God, we have another one of these. But Back for Blood is like the first one we've gotten in a very long time. And I'm like, yes, Left 4 Dead again. This is awesome. Yep. This is cool. I cannot wait. Phil. Yeah. I just have so many good memories of that game. Um, that Left 4 Dead was one of those games that like really defined my college years when I had nothing to do except hang out with friends and play a lot of video games. And like, oh, it was so good. And I played a little bit of this um, like several months ago and it was a lot of fun. I really, I really dug it. I really think it's full of a lot of great new ideas that have kind of come out of the multiplayer space in the time between now and the first Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2. And it's, it's informing what's going on in this game in a really interesting way. It's not breaking the mold by any stretch. It's like very much feels like the next spiritual successor, the next step on what Left 4 Dead should be. But it's full of a bunch of little tweaks that think that I really think are going to like elevate the game in in a lot of ways that you you might not necessarily fully expect right away. If that makes sense, right? Like all these little tweaks that it's like, oh, there's all this customization and there's all this um, opportunities to like synergize with your teammates and have good strategy and stuff. And it's all the kind of thing that I really enjoy. Or like we can sit in a Discord and like talk about our our strats for next time, kind of thing, and build our decks together and stuff. Like I'm I'm I think it'll be Left 4 Dead, but better in all the best ways. I'm super into that. Left 4 Dead, but better. Boy, those are some strong words. I'll say it's so. nothing. But yeah, well, I mean, that's <laughs> a man, a boy can dream. Um, mm. I, I think it's awesome that we're able to see the, re you know, we've seen games like this since Left 4 Dead. Clones, things attempt to try to do the same. We even see Rainbow Six kind of doing their own uh, interesting take just around the corner with extraction. Um, but I, I agree with you, Phil, that it's it's exciting to be able to see this revisited now, all those moons later. Because I, I played Black, uh, I played Left 4 Dead not too... Uh, I played it fairly recently because I loved that game. Um, and I still think it holds up uh, and it's, you know, in that kind of classic way that Valve games can somehow stand the test of time sometimes. Um, but I am extremely excited to see how uh, they're able to adapt like new styles of gameplay that have evolved from all those moons ago to now into black for back for blood and it's gonna be a game pass game which is yes. was a, quite a shocker today in the midst of many 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 other game pass games announced there's also the other there's also another uh, four player style um uh co-op shooter Left for Dead ish game that was announced. There's a lot, Kurt. Yes. There's just a lot. Well, it was like it was just announced like a few days ago. It's called like the Pirate Nessus. It was like had this like kind of funkadelic, like 60s vibe. Do you, you guys know what that? I don't know. I missed that one. Somebody can Sorry. fact check me in chat if There's anybody only, cares enough. We've only seen like 120 games in the last two days. And so. you don't remember every single one of them. <laughs> You're not an expert. You don't know the developer of every single one of them. Well, that actually brings <laughs> us very close to a close. Thank you, folks, for joining us on this very chaotic moment. Because you know what? This is E3, and E3 makes us all a little unhinged. We're not. We're getting a little sleep. I'm a Red Bull deep. I'm had. I've had two cups of coffee. Only one. A bag. Dude. A bag of a bag of cashews. Uh, I I think I ate some other food that I can't remember because I was just too busy trying to type things. Things are a little bit hectic, so bear with us in this moment. But nonetheless, this is how we close it out. We don't close it out dreamy and tired and cool. We close it out chaotic and hectic and intense. Because I'm Kurt and Davina, and this is Jordan Ramey, and this is Phil Hornshaw, and we're the closeout crew of E3. <laughs> but make sure you stick around uh, till tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that, because there's so much happening. Tam and Lucy and Dave Jewett is going to be joining you folks tomorrow morning. Uh, and leading you off into, I'm going to be coming around the mountain for uh, Capcom or something or another. Uh, I'll be here tomorrow to <laughs> tell you. Um, 
And then, of course, we got Nintendo Day coming up on Tuesday. I'll be around for that. And all in between, we got Play for All stuff. There's a lot happening. And you should be excited. Um, not because I said you said so, but because the universe uh, compels you to be excited. Anyways, <laughs> with that said, Jordan, Phil, thanks for joining me. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for everything you do. It's been a pleasure, Kurt. Thank you, Thank you Kurt. <laughs> all right. Uh, if I st- <laughs> I'm going to go take a nap, apparently. But once... It's just been a long day. Once will kill chaos. <laughs> uh... Oh, yeah, go see if that demo works. Go see if it changes the paradise. <laughs> the demo works. Uh, in the meantime, just thank you folks so, so, so much for joining us specifically, even if just for a moment. It means a lot that you took the time out of your day to at least see what GameSpot was talking about, even if you just so happen to tune in this moment. Uh, have a wonderful day. Drink some water. Do some high kicks and high five somebody you like. Till next time, see you, folks. <laughs>